I'm working on a new book. Come it's on. called Peter's Pattern. Peter Pan. Um, the, the next verse says of the book, stop listening to what Simon says. His original name was Simon and Jesus renamed him. But we all have that struggle. Don't worry. The new nature, the old nature. The old man, the new man. Going back into sin, going back into the world that God's called you to do. We all have that struggle. But sometimes we listen more to what Simon says than what Jesus says. We listen to that old man, we listen to that old sin nature, and we don't embrace the call that God has for our life. The book's called Peter's Pattern for a reason, because there's always a pattern. No one don't just get up one day and say, you know what? It's a good day to destroy my family. Yeah, I'll kill you. Who says that? It's a pattern. Am I right? So you get up and say, there's a pattern. No one don't say, well, you know what? I think I'm going to go to prison for a couple of years today. It's a nice day for that. No one does that. Amen? Well, no one does that. God bless you for bringing you me. Um, no one does that. No one says, I'm going to destroy my marriage today. There's never a plan to destroy something. Come on. But there is a pattern. But we're going to investigate the life of Peter because what a perfect person to look at. Why? Because he's a failure like us. But he's also called like us. He has problems like us. But he has a position like us. So the first teaching today is called Simon Says... You're not good enough. So I'm saying, you understand? Right. Simon says, you're not good enough. Maybe the enemy's been telling you that. You remember the whole game Simon says, if you ever played it? If you ever played the game, raise your hand. See, I didn't say Simon says, if you did it, that means you were now. <laughs> You know, enemy does that sometimes. He tells us what to do and what we don't do, and then when we don't do it, we do mess up, we get out of the game. Then we get ridiculed, and we get talked about, and we get laughed at, and then we feel like we're out of place. Doesn't the enemy do that? He says, do this, that, and other thing, and, and then instead of listening to Jesus, we listen to the flesh, we listen to the enemy, am I right about it? And then when we fall out, the enemy waits to condemn us and ridicule us and judge us and condemn us. We feel so bad that we don't even try anymore. Maybe someone is here today. Maybe someone's watching the message. And the enemy says, the world says, you say about yourself, I'm not good enough. I messed up. I've done too much wrong. I hurt too many people. I hurt my witness. Why even try? Well, I want you to know, the devil is a liar. The devil is a liar. Stop entertaining the lie of the enemy. When you begin to answer a question in your mind, like, yeah, I'm not good enough. Yeah, I can't do it. Yeah, I messed up too bad. My question is this. You didn't pose the question, why are you answering someone? You're having a conversation with the devil. And you're agreeing with his lies, his deception, and his condemnation. My Bible tells me that there is no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. Maybe you're condemning yourself. Maybe the enemy's condemning you. Maybe it's people's condemning you. But I want you to know, Jesus does not condemn. He intercedes. He prays for. He helps. He strengthens.
pick the twelve. He was not the beginning to pick the servants of God that he was going to use. And this is what we see in Luke chapter 5. But before he does, there's a crowd. And the crowd is pressing in on him. And the Bible says that he asked Simon Peter, he says, Simon, he says, can I get on your boat? Can I use your boat? Because they toiled all night, they caught none. And the Bible says there was men in their nets, washing their nets. He says, can I get in your boat? He gets on the boat of Peter, of Simon. He says, push out a little bit. And he begins to use Simon's boat as a polka. The crowds are listening. Matter of fact, there's science to this when you when you're speaking on the water, the water carries your voice that people can hear it louder. It becomes like a microphone. So as he's doing this, he preaches whatever he preaches. The Bible says he looks at Simon. He says, launch into the deep. Launch into the deep for a catch. This is the middle of the day. This is a carpenter telling a fisherman what to do.
It says he let down the net, not the nets plural. Singular. But even partial obedience, amazing. Even when we're not faithful, he is faithful. It says the net began to break. Can I say this? I think I'm safe to say this. It would have been more fish. They only put one net down. Jesus said, drop your nets plural more than one. And it said it began to break. And as the net began to break, he signaled for James and John, Peter and Andrew, James and John, those partners of this business. And he said, come on, we can't take it. Our boat's full. James and John, the boat gets full. And our boat on the ships are beginning to see. I don't know if you know, but boats are not made to see. But the load was so heavy and the catch was so great that the natural occurrence was affected by a supernatural blessing and breakthrough. And this was so amazing that Peter said, Depart from me, Lord. I'm a sinful man. Simon says, Wow. Simon says, you're too sinful. Simon says, you messed up too bad. Oh, and this is his biggest breakthrough. How can Simon say, I'm a sinner? Because see, the goodness of God, the love of God, the mercy of God, and the grace of God should cause us to say, God, I'm not good enough for this mercy. I'm not good enough to be used. I'm not good enough for your love. I'm not good enough for your
my son is good. This is good, right? I think God is speaking to us. I feel the anointing of God. And I'm just being led by God. Can I do that? He falls to his knees and says, I'm a sinner, God. And it's interesting, he says, Yeah, I keep it there. He says, I'm, I'm a sinner.
that the Bible says they have not entered into the heart and the mind of man that he has planned for those he loves. You see it like this. My thoughts, God said, is more numerous for us than the grains of the sand on the seashore. His plan is to give you a future and expect an end of breakthrough and that you would be used to bring many, many, many to the kingdom of heaven. You know Messed up on that one and that rock 
Love it. I got a snack. Sure. And they remember the old men. And they talk about their fishing stories. They talk about their past. They talk about their past catches. Very interesting. Because Jesus represented the kingdom of God as a net that brings in the fish. It brings in and separates the good fish from the bad fish, the true Christians from the not Christians. And it brings them in. So I want you to understand. You know why we keep listening to the enemy? Because we keep living in the past. What do you mean? I remember when I used to serve God. I remember when I used to go with the pastor. I remember my pastor was so sorry I got baptized with so who the heck cares what you do to represent Jesus at your baptism? I, I remember remember when we used to do this? Remember when when, when the, those were the good old days? Remember when we used to win this? Remember when I used to share all oh, that church ain't this and we we had we're stuck with a memory. That's why Psalm 37 says we hold our hearts up when we remember time.
when he says launch into the deep, when he says launch into the deep, look what he says. The Greek, the Greek word, the, the root word means the deep things of God. High depth. It means early in the morning. That's pretty interesting. Because maybe you've been in a nighttime experience. Your deeds are dark and sin. When you've been in the night, Jesus said, the day's almost spent. The night's about to come. Jesus is coming back. Maybe you've been in the night. God says, you don't have to be like that. I love you so much. My grace, my mercy is sufficient. He says, I see you how you are. But I choose to step into your boat, your life, your family, your mind, and your heart, and your ship. Why? So I can change it. But stop living in the memory of the past. Let me in. And this time, make a decision to get into the deep things of God. Meaning, last time, son, daughter, he wasn't in my word. This time, get in deep in the word and revelation of God. Last time you would come to church only when you felt like it, or when there was a revival, or when there was something special, or when you had a feeling, or you got blessed. Because there's no son, no daughter. You need to seek me, not stop for the glory of God. Because the more you get in my presence, the more you get in my word, the more you worship me, the more you commit to me, the more you abide in me, I'll abide in you. Turn away from our mid-way. Turn away from drunkenness. To live this life 
song about you to do this today. What a good word. This is what we do with grace. You know why? Eric, look what he says. Why do I need to help others? When they get the blessing, Corey, listen. When they get the blessing, look what he says. Bring that over here. You don't say no, this is all for me. Am I right or am I wrong? Because if he was one of the things that should have been his heart, I'd go, bless him. Then this is my area. He was on the other street. No, he calls for him. And what happens? The blessing overflows. Not only upon him, but upon everyone that connects it to us. Now it only says, Peter, Simon, James, and John. Is there Peter, James, and John. Peter means rock, tablet. Hebrew means tablet, stone. Like the Ten Commandments was written on stone. Rock. Right? John, James means surplanter or take one's place. And John means grace. Who is he connected with? Oh, that which represents the vision and mission that God called to. The law has been replaced by grace. The law has been replaced by God. If you don't serve God for this reason, you will never serve God. Maybe that's what this is. You're all going to hell. Hell! For you, for you, for you. No. I Grace message is amazing. He loves you. He loves you. Rabbis 
would see how you're doing with the Word of God. Some of them would have to, the majority of them would have to study five books of the law and then quote it verbatim. You can't quote five verses. You want me to quote five books? This is how serious it was. And then after a certain amount of time, usually three years, they only did this. The rabbis would come and say, follow me, follow me, follow me, follow me. They would go to the best, they would go to the best world and say, follow me, follow me. And then those would be their students that they pour into. But the ones that didn't get picked, Sometimes people would get picked. Watch this. They would get picked, but it wasn't that great of a rabbi. So when they was around people, they would say, "Who's your rabbi?" I heard Josh say, "Your rabbi." And oh, that rabbi just makes the cut, and he's it's my job to say he's even your rabbi. And some people would deny.
To stay current with podcasts, teachings, Bible school books, resources, and more. Available on our app or our website at sfgm.org. God bless.